So today, Julie's going to be talking to us about um, Sway and how to do easy newsletters. And she is an NCC professional learning specialist as well as a technology integration coach in Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, my name is Megan. I am in Tampa, Florida, and we are going to get started. So Julie, whenever you are ready. Awesome. OK, I'm going to go ahead and take control. Awesome. OK, so today we are going to be learning about making newsletters in Sway. Uh, I've been making my newsletters in Sway for several years now, and I love making them in Sway because uh, they they look very professional. They are visually dynamic, so we're going to look at one here in just a second, and you'll be able to see why um, what I mean by visually dynamic. Um, a Sway newsletter adjusts depending on the device that it's being viewed from. So it's going to look right whether I'm viewing it from my iPad or from my smartphone or from my computer. Another thing that I like about Sway is that it allows me to see data on how many people have viewed each Sway that I have published and it gives me um, information about if the the looks at my newsletters were just a glance or if they were a deeper read and we'll take a look at where you can see that here in just a sec. So let's take a look at a newsletter that's created in Sway. So this is my Tick Tech newsletter that I put out. It's embedded on my web page and all of my teachers that I serve in my district can go to my web page and see this. So you'll notice as I scroll down, my headings pop through. One of the things that I like about Sway is if, let's say that I looked at this little section here and I saw that one of my words was misspelled. I can go into Sway and make that correction and it's going to correct it for everybody instantly. Another thing that I like about Sway is it allows me to link items. So you can see here I have links to my previous newsletters. So people that are watching my newsletters can always go back and reference things that I included. I can also embed my Bitmoji. And then I have a link to my website. So that's just a quick look at a Sway. So our objectives for today, we have three things that we're going to do. We're going to learn how to create a Sway. Then we're going to learn how to change the look of the Sway. And then we're going to look at the sharing options that you have with your Sway. So the first thing that you're going to need to do to access Sway is to log into an Office 365 account. When you log into your Office 365 account, then you're going to click on the Sway icon that's going to look like this. When you click that Sway icon, you're going to see select a template and you'll have several different templates available. And I just took a quick little screenshot here of some of the templates that are available. You can also start from a blank Sway. I personally, when I first started using Sway, wanted to start with a template because I needed to see some items already in there to help me get started. So I recommend if, if you're new to Sway, Start with one of these templates just so that you can kind of understand how Sway works and then later on you'll probably be ready to go to the start with a blank. So let's go ahead and go live. So I've logged into my Office 365 account and you can see I have all of my app buttons right here. This is my Sway app button. So when I click on Sway, it's going to look like this. OK, so I have start from a new blank Sway. I can start from a document. So if I had a newsletter that I've already made, maybe in a Word document, I could upload it and start from that. Or I can use one of the templates. And you notice that there are more templates here if I click this link. I want to show you very briefly 
where you can see the view. So this was my winter newsletter and you can see it had 331 views. It gives me the average time spent and then it shows me how many were glances, how many were quick reads and how many were deep reads. So I really like having that data. It helps me know which of my newsletters are being viewed most often and I can uh, make a determination of how I shared my newsletter and what was most e effective with that. So when I'm going to start a Sway, let's go ahead and start it from a newsletter. It pops in like this. And I just click start editing this Sway. When I start editing this way, you can notice that I have all of these little cards. So these squares here are called cards. And anytime I want to edit any of these cards, I just click on it. So I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to change this to Julie's Sway. I can choose a focus point if I want. I can add a link if I want. I can emphasize text. I'm going to click the down button here so that you can see there's more. Anytime you're in an office product and you see the little arrow, if you click on it, it's going to give you some more options. So you notice that we had the little background. If I click on this background, I can delete this one and then I can add my own. Watch what happens when I click add a background. It automatically pops up this other window that says, hey, you want to add a picture. Where do you want to get it? So I'm just going to type in cats. And see what pops up. OK, so I've got several images of cats here. I'm just going to pick one so that you can see how that comes in. So now I've added a picture of a cat. I could also add a logo. So if I wanted to add my school system logo, this would be a good place to do that. Now let's take a look at what the changes that I've made look like. I'm going to click play. And when I click play, you can see here's a nice little preview of the changes that I've made so far. Awesome. To go back to edit, I just click the little pencil. And it gives me the ability to edit. Anytime I want to change anything, all I do is just click on it. Now I want to draw your attention briefly to the little plus icon here. If you click that plus, it gives you the option to add content. So I can add another heading, text, an image. So if you have an image on your computer, you can add an image. Or if you wanted to add another image from this area here, you can do that as well. You can also add text. You can add media, so anything that you can get an embed code for, you can add it here. And then you have these other options as well. So each of these things can be added. Anything that you add, so let's just say I wanted to add some text. Based on the type of item that I'm going to add determines the kinds of options that I'm going to have related to that. So if I have text, then it's going to give me the option to emphasize or to accent that text. I might have bullets. And then I always have the option to delete the card from my Sway if I don't really want that. I can also reorganize my Sway, my Sway cards. So maybe I want this card to be placed lower in my line. I can click on it and just drag down and pop it in wherever I choose. OK, so Megan. Do we have uh, let's take a break and I'd like for you guys to add an emoji or um, some kind of indicator in the chat of how you're feeling so far about Sway. And in the Megan, meantime, if, Julie, there are huh? no questions. There are no questions yet. OK, and if you have a question, go ahead and pop that in there as well, and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. OK, so let's move on to the design. 
Remember, one of the reasons that I say I really like using Sway for my newsletters is that you can get a professional look with very little effort. So we're going to go back to <clears throat> this newsletter here. Actually, let's do this one. So this is my Tic Tac News Spring 2020 newsletter. And I'm going to click play so you can see one more time how it looks. Now when I click edit, if I want to change the look of this, I can do it very easily. I just click design. So notice I've got storyline here. This is where I'm adding my cards. I click design. And it doesn't look like anything has happened yet. That's because I need to click on my styles palette. So when I click on my styles palette, that pops over here and I can see lots of options now. So this way right now scrolls vertically. I can change it though and have it scroll horizontally. I can also change it and have it act as slides. So I'm going to go back to vertical. Now if I move on down, I have some custom made palettes that all I need to do is just click on that palette and it automatically changes the look and feel of this particular sway. Just with the click of a button. And you can see we have lots and lots of choices. Lots of, oh, cat, nice. So if I don't want to go through all of these, I can also just click the remix. And I love the remix. So watch what happens when I click remix. It automatically just randomly gives me a whole new look and feel for my sway. I like that one. I'm going to click remix again and see what I get. Another thing that I like about using the remix is if let's say I've clicked remix three times now and oh you know I really like that one that I looked at a couple a couple of clicks ago I can use the undo button to take me back to the one that I really liked and now when I play I've got a whole new look very clean professional and polished just by clicking a button So now let's talk about the ways to share a sway because once you've made your newsletter, the whole point of making a newsletter is being able to share it. So I'm going to come back over here to this particular sway and I'm going to click edit. I'm going to go back to storyline. I like that view. It's a little cleaner. So I have two ways to share. I can click the share button. Now let's talk about permissions for just a sec. When you share, you want to make sure that you pay attention to the permissions of your sway. Right now I have the permissions for this sway set so that anyone with the link can view it. You can have it just so that people in your organization that have the link can view it, or you can only share it with specific people if you want to keep it really private. I have to do my newsletters so that anyone with the link can view it because I may have people outside of my school system who need to be able to see this. For example, I might have some parents that need to be able to see this. So that's why I choose anyone with the link. You also want to make sure that you have it set to view and not edit, but keep in mind that you can have view. You can, you can share this with people so that they can edit too. You can also get a visual link. I like the visual link when um, I'm sending out uh, invitations or if I'm sending out an email to my uh, schools, then I will use this visual link. Uh, it's, it's just a little prettier to see and I just copy that and then paste it straight into my email. Now let's take a look at my jelly beans or ellipses. So in the jelly beans, I can save this way as a template. I could print this way. 
I can export the SWAY. So when you export a SWAY, you can export it as a PDF or you can export it to Word. When you do that, it's going to have several pages and you may need to adjust the settings a bit. So I'm going to show you in Word what that looks like. So this is my winter newsletter that I exported into Word and I had to do a little adjusting to make it fit, but that gives you an idea of what your newsletter could look like if you needed to go from the dynamic sway to the, the print version. I also like the accessibility checker and accessibility view. Microsoft is all about um, equal access and um, this is one way that you can make sure that your students maybe that have some visual impairments can see your newsletter very well. Nice change there. So let's review. Ways to share in Sway. You have clicking share and you have clicking the ellipses. And each of those are areas that you need to pay attention to once you're ready to publish your, your newsletter. So Megan, go ahead and uh, let's check the chat if you've got some questions. Uh, let's go ahead and ask those so that we can awesome. get you guys finished in 30 minutes. Yes, so I was just answering a few questions, um, Julie, about anyone um, having access, so we don't have to worry about that one. Um, and then um, a question about sharing a sway in, in a body of an email rather than just a link. So I was showing, I was going to explain, or if you want to show how you can go to settings and then export this way. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to go into my sway. I'm going to click share. Did you want me to export it? Um, so when you click on the ellipses or your jelly beans, um, how you can export it, and then it'll allow you to export it as a Word document, a PDF. Um, so if they wanted to put that in the body of an email instead of a link, just another option. Yes. And feel free to come off mute if you would like to ask another specific question. Otherwise, Julie's going to continue and then we can have questions at the end as well. Now, one of the things to think about, so this image is really large, so it's going to take up a huge amount of space as long as you're not printing it. If you're just doing it as a PDF and you're going to put that in as an attachment in an email, then you should be fine. If uh, if you were going to print this, then you'd probably want to export it to Word and um, adjust some of these uh, images. You might even want to take some of the images out because they're really not necessary. They're just there to make it look nice. Did that, did that help? Yes, so when we when you upload it or export it as a PDF or a Word document, some functionalities of this way disappear. Um, so just wanting to recognize that. Yes, indeed. I'm wondering if the any of the links will work. Let's see. Uh, it looks like the links might work. Yeah, so the links will work. Any other questions? We are good to continue, Julie. Thank you. Awesome. So this was super brief and it's by no means everything that you need to know about SWAY, everything that you need to know about SWAY. So I would recommend these two locations to learn more about SWAY. The Microsoft Educator Community at education.microsoft.com is a great place to learn more about SWAY. Um, the digital storytelling with Microsoft Sway is where I would recommend you start if you're brand new to Sway and you want to learn more. One of the things that I like about learning uh, about any Microsoft tool at the education at the Microsoft Educator Community site is that everything that they have on that site is designed with the classroom and the student learner in mind. So it's not just going to teach you how to use Sway, it's going to teach you how to use Sway in the context of a classroom setting. 
Another place that you can go to learn more about Sway is the YouTube Sway playlist. And I put a bit.ly link, a bit.ly address there. Um, it's bit.ly slash capital Y capital T for YouTube and Sway playlist. Uh, and that's got, I think, about 16 videos there that you can watch. And most of them are um, three to five minutes in length. Um, I like learning from the playlist because if I already know how to do certain things, I can skip those things and dig deeper very quickly without a huge time commitment. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Julie. Um, what are some options for inserting media choices? OK. So let's go back to this one. So I'm just going to click right here and click add. And when I go to media, I can choose an image. I can choose a video. I can choose an audio file. If it's an object that has an embed code, I could do that. Or I can upload something straight from my computer. So I'm just going to click video. And you'll notice when I click video that this area over here changes from images to videos. And because cats was the last thing that I searched for, I actually have cat videos right here that I can look at. Word of caution, if you're using this with your students in the classroom, you need to talk to them about adding videos to their sways. I always tell my students, um, any video that you put in the sway, you have to watch it from beginning to end. So if you only have, you know, 20 minutes in class to work on something, then adding a video that takes 15 minutes is not going to be time efficient for you. So you're going to want to be sure and keep your videos very short. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Julie. And just wanted to point out, Mohammed also said that we can link media to text as well. So that's another great tip. Oh, sure. Yeah, so when I click this, if I click link, then I can paste any web link that I want right right in that spot. So any any words you can turn into a link to something else. Any other things you'd like to see? Yes, Julie, can you embed a video you make, like if you have it from Loon or from Screencastify? Sure. So if you if you have a video, then you're going to want to. So there are a couple of ways you could do that. If you have it in Screencastify, then you'll have a, a link that you could share straight from your uh, Google Drive. So you could copy that link and then add it that way just by adding the link. Or if you have a, um, if you download it to your computer, then you could just click here and go to suggested and choose my device, and then you can upload it straight from your device. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Julie. Would you also mind sharing how students might use Sway? Oh, absolutely. So I, Sway is a great tool and I'm going to go back to the templates to give you some more ideas. So if your students, if you wanted your students to create a presentation about volcanoes, then you could guide them to the presentation template and then they start working on volcanoes and one of the things that I like about using the templates is it gives students a place to start. You know, sometimes starting with that blank page is, is just tough for them. So this is a great way for them to create something that looks very polished and very professional. So let's say that they're going to be searching volcanoes. So they're going to delete this, type volcanoes, I spell it right? Probably not. There we go. OK, so I have all these different images. I can also look at videos. A word of caution. 
the students are going to find the videos. So telling them that they can't use videos is I want them to be able to use everything that's available. So I would suggest that you have a rubric ahead of time that identifies the criteria that you're most interested in. Um, I wouldn't spend a lot of time teaching them how to use Sway because these are digital natives and they're going to figure it out. Now, obviously, if you're working with students that are very young, I'd say third grade or lower, then you might want to spend a little bit more time showing them how to use Sway. But with your with your students fourth grade and up, all you got to do is show them how to get to it, show them how to start with the template and give them their rubric that you're going to use to evaluate whatever they're creating. Some other things that you can do so they have student reports here, a vacation story, you know, any of these you could use with your students. Any other ideas, questions? That is it, Julie. Unless there's anything else you would like to share or anyone else that would like to come off mute. Um, actually, Julie, could you show how if you were to share and you probably mentioned this and I apologize if you wanted to work on this together with somebody? Sure. How would you do that? Thank you. So if I wanted, maybe I want my students to collaborate. So I'll have one student create. And then I will invite people to edit. So when I invite people to edit, I'm going to copy that link and then I would just paste that link in an email to that person that I want to edit with me and then they'll be able to edit. Any other any other questions or comments? That is it, Julie. Before we go, I want to make sure we um, if I could share my screen real quick. Sure. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. You are welcome. That was fun. <laughs>